Hello, I am Daisy, your hostess. Welcome. In this video, we're going through the book titled The Power of Your Subconscious Mind by Dr. Joseph Murphy. Before I get started on the next chapter, I'm going to give some points of what I thought were my takeaways from the previous chapter, and it was titled How to Use Your Subconscious for Wealth. And before I get started, I am by no means an expert on wealth nor the accumulation of wealth. But I definitely would love to be that person that could demonstrate that I have some mastery over it. From this um, website, it's called Investopedia. The wealthiest man in the world is this gentleman called Arnold Benot. And he is a holder of uh, many luxury brands like Louis Vuitton and Hennessy, Jeff Bezos, and then Elon Musk. I'm sure that Taylor Swift would be up there, right, as an artist. There were some really interesting takeaways from that chapter. And the first thing for me was that you have to decide. You have to decide to be wealthy. I think that maybe that's one thing that we can agree on the word decide, because at some point, I'm sure you have been there where you've decided about something that and I've decided on something. And there is a feeling when you make a decision. There's a certain vibe that mentally, emotionally, physically, you're ready to embark on something. So the feeling of decision is something that I think you and I are familiar with. So now it's, are we ready to decide to be wealthy? That's one of the things that he mentioned. You've got to decide, to decide that you want to be wealthy. And it's a mindset. I get yes. that. And it remind me of this guy that I was listening to recently on YouTube. His name is Ty Lopez. You probably know the guy without knowing the guy. He is the guy that for a while, every time you would you know, watch a video, you would see his commercial. Um, it was like, uh, this is me in my garage and here's my you know brand cars it's like I don't know if it was Lamborghinis I think it's Lamborghini and um, but one thing he did do he was or is an avid reader so he's of the mindset it's like why do I need to learn these lessons when I've got all these mentors in these books that show me how they've already gone through it so there is a mindset put it this way he he pushed his brand right now uh, I think he's on track to uh, hold a seminar with the top 300 people that he has mentored towards wealth. And it just goes to show if you have a desire and decide, which is what Dr. Joseph Murphy is saying, which I'm sure I'm, Ty Lopez, did you read, you know, this book? I'm sure you did. So anyway, um, you know, having that conviction. And he, and Dr. Joseph Murphy also said that the trouble with most people is that they don't have an invisible support. So why not, you know, work in with this subconscious uh, that is ready to give you what you want? The question is, is the captain, the conscious mind, you know, stopping the subconscious, you know, this, this, it's, it's almost like there's a vault here full of gold ready to burst out into, you know, into a uh, manifestation for you. But, you know, what are the words that we're saying? You know, what kind of words are you depositing, am I depositing, in my vault? That might be a hindrance. Remember we talked about what Dr. Joseph Murphy said? He said, your subconscious is impressionable. So, like, what are these plates of photography that you've put in there? We might have to, like, you know, tear some, some of these things up and, you know, make way for empowering words that allow us to you know, live that great life that we want to live. And, and you know, wealth is, is so many different things. I mean, I would love to speak with my grandmother and my grandmother's grandmother and all these other people because it's we're different and living in different times. Uh, the culture, I mean, my parents are from the Dominican Republic, even though I was born in New York City. Um, I grew up and had the opportunity to see that kind of wealth my grandmother was like the midwife of the village, and, and and my grandparents, in a sense, were very wealthy. Not in a sense like we... Well, maybe he was. I mean, with 11 children. Uh, he had more than 11 children because that was from my grandmother and then um, from his previous wife who had deceased. I think there were seven other kids. So my grandmother raised like 18 kids <laughs> at some point. And, um, but I do remember... In the evenings, there was no electricity. They would have uh, the lantern because uh, you would hear it hum, you know. I had this little hum. And right before we went to bed, all the children 
and everyone in the household would sit down and pray. And that's how we ended the night. And then there was, I remember, uh, a, a radio, and, and the village the village people would come to my grandmother's house, because I guess they must have been the only ones with radio, and they listened to some soap opera. <laughs> but, um, and then there was always someone with a guitar, playing the guitar. You can't buy that with money, you know? And grandfather would get up in the morning um, and off to work he would go. Both my grandparents were like that. My father's parents, they had two homes, one in the city and one in the in the countryside. And grandpa would, you know, load up uh, the staff because we had, we had maids and uh, they would help grandma cook because you had to get up early to cook for the the farmers, right? Anyway, a different life, but a beautiful life and something that I think so many people yearn for um, today. But then there's those people that want the Louis Vuitton and, you know, all the the bling bling. But is that everything? I don't think so. I don't think so. I digress. I digress. Let's go back to money consciousness because that's what this chapter was about. And, and even though um, those fine things we deserve, right? Um, because I believe it's part of the right that we can pursue love, happiness, and wealth for whatever wealth means to you and you want to achieve. Because what is all the wealth if you don't have health? But I think it was, um, you know, we have these things that we need. And then it's interesting that wealth is something that we want to have before we have what's it called transcendental experiences. Do you want to know how to use your subconscious for wealth? Make sure you listen to that chapter. Let's turn the page now to The Power of Your Subconscious Mind by Dr. Joseph Murphy. Chapter 10. Your Right to Be Rich. It is your right to be rich. You are here to lead the abundant life and be happy, radiant, and free. You should therefore have all the money you need to lead a full, happy, and prosperous life. You are here to grow expand, and unfold spiritually, mentally, and materially. You have the inalienable right to fully develop and express yourself along all lines. You should surround yourself with beauty and luxury. Why be satisfied with just enough to go around when you can enjoy the riches of your subconscious mind? In this chapter, you can learn to make friends with money, and you should always have a surplus. Your desire to be rich is a desire for a fuller, happier, more wonderful life. It is a cosmic urge. It is not only good, but very good. Money is a symbol. Money is a symbol of exchange. It means to you not only freedom from want, but beauty, luxury, abundance, and refinement. It is merely a symbol of the economic health of the nation. When your blood is circulating freely in your body, you are healthy. When money is circulating freely in your life, you are economically healthy. When people begin to hoard money, to put it away in tin boxes and become charged with fear, there is economic illness. Money has taken many forms as a medium of exchange down through the centuries, such as salt, beads, and trinkets of various kinds. In early times, a man's wealth was determined by the number of sheep and oxen he had. Now we use currency and other negotiable instruments, as it is much more convenient to write a check than carry some sheep around with you to pay bills. How to Walk the Royal Road to Riches Knowledge of the powers of your subconscious mind is the means to the royal road to riches of all kinds, spiritually, mental, or financial. The student of the laws of mind believes and knows definitely that regardless of economic situations, stock market fluctuation, depression, strikes, war, other conditions or circumstances, he will always be amply supplied regardless of what form money takes. The reason for this is that 
he has conveyed the idea of wealth to his subconscious mind. And it keeps him supplied wherever he may be. He has convinced himself in his mind that money is forever flowing freely in his life and that there is always a wonderful surplus. Should there be a financial collapse of government tomorrow and all the man's present holdings become valueless, as the German Marx did after the First World War, he would still attract wealth and be cared for, regardless of the form the new currency took. Why you do not have more money. As you read this chapter, you are probably saying, I am worthy of a higher salary than I'm receiving. I believe most people are inadequately compensated. One of the causes many people do not have more money is that they are silently or openly condemning it. They refer to money as filthy lucre or the love of money is the root of all evil. Another reason they do not prosper is that they have a sneaky subconscious feeling that there is some virtue in poverty. This subconscious pattern may be due to early childhood training, superstition, or it could be based on a false interpretation of scriptures. Money and a balanced life. One time a man said to me, I am broke, I do not like money, it is the root of all evil. These statements represent a confused neurotic mind. A love of money to the exclusion of everything else will cause you to become lopsided and unbalanced. You are here to use your power or authority wisely. Some men crave power, others crave money. If you set your heart on money exclusively and say, money is all I want, I am going to give all my attention to amassing money, nothing else matters. You can get money and attain a fortune, but you have forgotten that you are here to lead a balanced life. You must also satisfy the hunger for peace of mind, harmony, love, joy, and perfect health. By making money your sole aim, you simply made a wrong choice. You thought that was all you wanted, but you found after all your efforts that it was not only the money you needed. You also desired true expression of your hidden talents, true place in life, beauty, and the joy of contributing to the welfare and success of others. By learning the laws of your subconscious mind, you could have a million dollars or many millions if you wanted them, and still have peace of mind, harmony, perfect health, and perfect expression. Poverty is a mental disease. There is no virtue in poverty. It is a disease like any other mental disease. If you were physically ill, you would think there was something wrong with you. You would seek help and do something about the condition at once. Likewise, if you do not have money constantly circulating in your life, there is something radically wrong with you. The urge of the life principle in you is toward growth, expansion, and the life more abundant. You are not here to live in a hovel, dress in rags, and go hungry. You should be happy, prosperous, and successful. Why you must never criticize money. Cleanse your mind of all weird and superstitious beliefs about money. Do not ever regard money as evil or filthy. If you do, you cause it to take wings and fly away from you. Remember that you lose what you condemn. You cannot attract what you criticize. Getting the right attitude toward money. Here is a simple technique you may use to multiply money in your experience. Use the following statements several times a day. I like money. I love it. I use it wisely, constructively, and judiciously. Money is constantly circulating in my life. I release it with joy, and it returns to me multiplied in a wonderful way. It is good and very good. Money flows to me in avalanches of abundance. I use it for good only, 
and I am grateful for my good and for the riches of my mind. How the scientific thinker looks at money. Suppose, for example, you found gold, silver, lead, copper, or iron in the ground. Would you pronounce these things evil? All evil comes from man's darkened understanding, from his ignorance, from his false interpretation of life, and from his misuse of his subconscious mind. Uranium, lead, or some other metal could have been used as a medium of exchange. We use paper bills, checks, nickel, and silver. Surely these are not evil. Physicists and chemists know today that the only difference between one metal and another is the number of rate of motion of electrons revolving around a central nucleus. They can now change one metal into another through a bombardment of the atoms in the powerful cyclotron. Gold under certain conditions becomes mercury. I believe that our modern scientists in the near future will be able to make gold, silver, and other metals synthetically in the chemical laboratory. The cost may be prohibitive now, but it can't be done. I cannot imagine any intelligent person seeing anything evil in electrons, neutrons, protons, and isotopes. The piece of paper in your pocket is composed of atoms and molecules with their electrons and protons arranged differently. Their number and rate of motion are different. That is the only way the paper differs from the silver in your pocket. How to attract the money you need. Many years ago, I met a young boy in Australia who wanted to become a physician and surgeon, but he had no money. I explained to him how a seed deposited in the soil attracts to itself everything necessary to its unfolding and that all he had to do was to take a lesson from the seed and deposit the required idea in his subconscious mind. For expenses, this young, brilliant boy used to clean out doctor's offices, wash windows, and do odd repair jobs. He told me that every night, as he went to sleep, he used to picture in his mind's eye a medical diploma on a wall with his name on it in big, bold letters. He used to clean and shine the framed diplomas in the medical building where he worked. It was not hard for him to engrave the image of a diploma in his mind and develop it there. Definite results followed as he persisted with his mental picture every night for about four months. The sequel of the story was very interesting. One of the doctors took a great liking to this young boy, and after training him in the art of sterilizing instruments, giving hypodermic injections, and other miscellaneous first aid work, he employed him as a technical assistant in his office. The doctor later sent him to medical school at his own expense. Today, this young man is a prominent medical doctor in Montreal, Canada. He discovered the law of attraction by using his subconscious mind the right way. He operated an age-old law which says, Having seen the end, you have willed the means to the realization of the end. The end in this case was to become a medical doctor. This young man was able to imagine, see, and feel the reality of being a doctor. He lived with that idea, sustained it, nourished it, and loved it until through his imagination it penetrated the layers of his subconscious mind and became a conviction, thereby attracting to him everything necessary for the fulfillment of his dream. Why some men do not get a raise in pay. If you are working in a large organization and you are silently thinking of and resenting the fact that you are underpaid, that you are not appreciated, and that you deserve more money and greater recognition, you are subconsciously severing your ties with that organization. You are setting a law in motion. And the superintendent or manager will say to you, we have to let you go. Actually, you dismissed yourself. The manager was simply the instrument through which your own negative mental state was confirmed. It was an example of the law of action and reaction. 
The action was your thought, and the reaction was the response of your subconscious mind. Obstacles and impediments on the pathway to riches. I am sure you have heard men say, that fellow has a racket. He is a racketeer. He is getting money dishonestly. He is a faker. I knew him when he had nothing. He is a crook, a thief, and a swindler. If you analyze the man who talks like that, you discover he is usually in want or suffering from some financial or physical illness. Perhaps his former college friends went up the ladder of success and excelled him. Now he is bitter and envious of their progress. In many instances, this is the cause of his downfall, thinking negatively of these classmates and condemning their wealth causes the wealth and prosperity he is praying for to vanish and flee away. He is condemning the thing he is praying for. He is praying two ways. On the one hand, he is saying, wealth is flowing to me now. And in the next breath, silently or audibly, he is saying, I resent that fellow's wealth. Always make it a special point to rejoice in the wealth of the other person. Protect your investments. If you are seeking wisdom regarding investments, or if you are worried about your stocks or bonds, quietly claim. Infinite intelligence governs and watches over all my financial transactions, and whatsoever I do shall prosper. Do this frequently, and you will find that your investments will be wise. Moreover, you will be protected from loss, as you will be prompted to sell your securities or holdings before any loss accrues to you. You cannot get something for nothing. In large stores, the management employs store detectives to prevent people from stealing. They catch a number of people every day trying to get something for nothing. All such people are living in the mental atmosphere of lack and limitation and are stealing from themselves peace, harmony, faith, honesty, integrity, goodwill, and confidence. Furthermore, they are attracting to themselves all manner of loss, such as loss of character, prestige, social status, and peace of mind. These people lack faith in the source of supply and the understanding of how their minds work. If they would mentally call on the powers of their subconscious mind and claim that they are guided to their true expression, they would find work and constant supply. Then by honesty, integrity, and perseverance, they would become a credit to themselves and to society at large. Your constant supply of money. Recognizing the powers of your subconscious mind and the creative power of your thought or mental image is the way to opulence, freedom, and constant supply. Accept the abundant life in your own mind. Your mental acceptance and expectancy of wealth has its own mathematics and mechanics of expression. As you enter into the mood of opulence, all things necessary for the abundant life will come to pass. Let this be your daily affirmation. Write it in your heart. I am one with the infinite riches of my subconscious mind. It is my right to be rich, happy, and successful. Money flows to me freely, copiously, and endlessly. I am forever conscious of my true worth. I give of my talents freely, and I am wonderfully blessed financially. It is wonderful. Step up this way to riches. 1. Be bold enough to claim that it is your right to be rich, and your deeper mind will honor your claim. 2. You don't want just enough to go around. You want all the money you need to do all the things you want to do and when you want to do them. Get acquainted with the riches of your subconscious mind. 3. When money is circulating freely in your life, you are economically healthy. Look at money like the tide and you will always have plenty of it. The ebb 
and flow of the tide is constant. When the tide is out, you are absolutely sure that it will return. 4. Knowing the laws of your subconscious mind, you will always be supplied regardless of what form money takes. 5. One reason many people simply make ends meet and never have enough money is that they condemn money. What you condemn takes wings and flies away. 6. Do not make a god of money. It is only a symbol. Remember that the real riches are in your mind. You are here to lead a balanced life. This includes acquiring all the money you need. 7. Don't make money your sole aim. Claim wealth, happiness, peace, true expression, and love, and personally radiate love and goodwill to all. Then your subconscious mind will give you compound interest in all these fields of expression. 8. There is no virtue in poverty. It is a disease of the mind, and you should heal yourself of this mental conflict or malady at once. 9. You are not here to live in a hovel, to dress in rags, or to go hungry. You are here to lead the life more abundant. 10. Never use the terms filthy lucre or I despise money. You lose what you criticize. There is nothing good or bad, but thinking of it in either light makes it so. Repeat frequently. I like money. I use it wisely, constructively, and judiciously. I release it with joy, and it returns a thousandfold. 12. Money is not evil any more so than copper, lead, tin, or iron, which you may find in the ground. All evil is due to ignorance and misuse of the mind's powers. 13. To picture the end result in your mind causes your subconscious to respond and fulfill your mental picture. 14. Stop trying to get something for nothing. There is no such thing as a free lunch. You must give to receive. You must give mental attention to your goals, ideals, and enterprises, and your deeper mind will back you up. The key to wealth is application of the laws of the subconscious mind by impregnating it with the idea of wealth. End of chapter. Like, share, and subscribe. Let's head over to the next video as we continue on with the book titled The Power of Your Subconscious Mind by Dr. Joseph Murphy.